So let's say that the case study we're trying to do is to get people to stop littering from their cars. And what we've got to do is figure out how to stop that. How many people recognize this image? Yeah, pretty good recognition. Even though this comes from the Keep America Beautiful campaign in 1971. In this campaign, Iron Eyes Cody makes an emotional connection with his tear. Even though, as a side note, he's actually a, an Italian actor named Esperato de Cody, but that's beside the point. My question is, does an emotional connection matter if it works just a little bit on everyone? Because the reality is, with anything you're trying to communicate, when you're trying to market your events, when you're trying to align your team, anything you're trying to sell falls across a continuum. You could functionally tell people about your products, ideas, your event. You could suggest the benefit. You could make an emotional connection. Or you could go a step further and make a cultural connection. In a cultural connection, you're not speaking to someone. You're speaking with them, and that's empowering. When you make a cultural connection, it's like the reason why people tattoo Harley Davidson on the side of their arm, even though it's a corporate logo. But to make a cultural connection, you need to intimately understand your customer. So we need to know who litters. Now, back in the day, Texas-based gsd &M, they spent half a million dollars hiring a company to figure out who litters. And I'm going to see if we could recreate that in this room. Do you think we could do it? Okay, I'm going to need you to be loud. We're going to figure out who litters on the side of the road. Males or females? Females! Oh, there's not like one guy who could throw in females at the end of that. All right, some males litter. Young males or old males? No. Those damn young males. Do they drive cars or do they drive trucks? Trucks. Minivans or pickup trucks? Okay, so with like no research at all, you're a very convinced audience. It turns out, after really doing this research, you're absolutely right! The people who litter on the side of the road are males, they're young, and they drive pickup trucks. They also drink beer. I know this because I've researched this one myself. And it's Texas, so let's give them a shotgun rack. But most importantly, they have a king of my world lifestyle. So put yourself inside that pickup truck, juxtapose yourself next to the crying Italian actor, and ask yourself if he stops you from wanting to throw a beer can at the side of your pickup truck. Inevitably, he does not. So I'm going to show you the campaign they came up with. If you're from Texas, you'll recognize it. If you're from outside of it, you'll know of it, but you won't necessarily know it's from littering. Yes. Don't mess with Texas. Yeah, we got a Texas contingent here. And my favorite part about this, trademark. This is a... This is a trademarked ad slogan. These words were used for the very first time to get young males to stop littering. In fact, one of the very first commercials had two NFL Dallas Cowboy superstars. The one guy sees someone litter, picks up the can on the side of the road, crushes it against his head, and says, if you litter in Texas, you're littering on me. Don't mess with Texas. Okay. I will not litter. Now, obviously, we see how this message connects. I'm going to show you an example of how the charitable group that stops littering keeps this message tied to their actual campaign. Here's a, a recent piece. Hey, this is Owen Wilson. This is Erica Badu. I'm Janine Turner. This is Julius Jones. This is Lance Armstrong. This is Leanne Womack. We're Lost Lonely Boys. This is Chuck Norris. This is Jennifer Love Hewitt reminding you. Don't mess with Texas. Now... Personally, I would have ended on Chuck Norris. <laughs> but they're like, no, everyone's afraid of Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> so put yourself inside that pickup truck, compare the two campaigns, and it's pretty clear which one makes a difference. The first one seems like a good campaign, but then when you see the difference of a cultural connection, it's that much more powerful. In addition to making that cultural connection, litter on the side of the road was reduced by 72 percent. 
over four years, slightly exceeding the goal, which was 5%. <laughs> and of course, that slogan is now synonymous with Texas. The takeaway is that in all industries, innovation starts by intimately observing your customer, whether you're in design, artist, entrepreneur, or if you put on events. It matters for your CEO just as much as it matters for your newest hire. I'll give you an example of how different companies are pushing to really understand their customer. I was interviewing the head of design for GM, and I was most interested in the Cadillac Escalade, the greatest selling SUV by dollar value. The reason, of course, that this vehicle is so hot is that it is in every rap video. It is an icon of hip-hop culture. So I asked him, how did you make this possible? Was this uh, you know, product placement in, in videos, or what did you do? And he said, well, Jeremy, I designed a luxurious sport utility vehicle for affluent males aged 45 to 60. And then that happened. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I went to school. I'm glad I studied marketing. That really worked out. But when he didn't understand his customer, when chaos changed his world, he needed to know how they thought. So he personally went to one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Detroit. And I want you to think about who's driving the Escalade in the most dangerous neighborhood in Detroit. Then when he saw one, he flagged it down, <laughs> went up, and said, uh, excuse me, young man, but I designed this vehicle, and I was wondering if I could accompany you on a ride alongside your business for the day. <laughs> wow. Think about how much he'd learn, though, from talking to someone who's otherwise so culturally different. And for that young man, this is an opportunity to hang out with the guy that invented the icon of his lifestyle. So when you're hunting for trends, then you start by resetting your expectations, build your customer understanding, and sure, look at what your competitors are doing, but also look at what's happening in other events. Fashion, design, marketing, pop culture. What are the coolest runways that are getting viral attention, and what elements of that could you actually bring into an event? Look in these other industries, and you can find a way to reinvent. Then look for patterns that are interesting, and from there you can start to innovate.